Hi, hello everyone. Welcome to Cisco CCNA OSPF Labs. So again, it's the same kind of lab. We have we have four routers. There's an internet router. R1 is a gate border router, and R1, R2, R3 they're running OSPF area zero. And there'll be a static default route on R1 pointed to internet. We are and we are redistributing that static route, or we are injecting the, that, that static route into OSPF. And also guys, very important, we will see there's a difference between OSPF and RIP because OSPF is one of the true link state routing protocols. So you, when you go to sysnet.ca, you will learn more about OSPF and advanced routing concepts. So guys, let's go through the condition for time being. So configure R1 for NAT so that entire 10 slash 8, so 10 slash 8 is my, my local area network, will be NATed to the public IP address of router 1. Add a static default route on R1 with the next stop of, so I'm, I'm talking about the static route we have to add. Then I'm asking, enable OSPF area 0. So router 1, router 2, router 3 is running OSPF. And I'm I'm asking you to hardcode the router ID as loopback 0. So even if you don't hardcode router ID as a loopback 0, it'll be loopback 0, but I'm, I'm asking to hardcode. Then the very important thing, to configure OSPF between router 1 and router 2, I'm, I'm asking you to use the network command. I'm saying, but between R2 and R3, do not use network command. So we are going to enable OSPF on the interface between Ethernet 00 and Ethernet 01. And, but everything should work. So we are going to understand while we are, while we are configuring, we are going to understand what's the difference between process ID, area ID, how to send the default route. Then finally, I'm I'm telling, play with change the hello interval on router two, okay, and check and change. If it is ten, I'll change to eleven, and see what's going to happen to the neighbor. Neighbor will be going down. Then we are going to put it back to neighbor to come up. So it will be so this kind of a, guys again. Remember, it's a CCNA lab, OSPF lab, so it will be a very basic lab, but we will try to understand the firm grasp on this particular fundamentals. So I'm going to bring back my. So I'm going to move this one up a little bit and going to bring back by my secure CRT window. So as I said, there won't be no configuration changes for internet. So basically it has show IP interface brief. In the real world, you don't have no access to internet router. So this is the internet router, my gateway. So router one, my full control of router one, show IP interface brief. I already pre-configured the IPs. So those are the IPs, show IP route. I have only static default route, so I don't have to configure static default route, it's already there. As a verification, okay, I have this command on R2. So let's type show IP interface brief, exclude unassigned, then show IP route. There's no dynamic routing protocols. R3 also same thing. Show IP interface brief, then show IP route. So guys, it asked me to type, so let's configure OSPF. So let's bring back the diagram, okay? Router one, config T, router OSPF. So I have type process ID. So pro remember the process ID is local to the router. So what I'm going to just, just because it's a testing environment for us to understand, for R1, I'm going to press process 1, R2 process 2, and R3 process 3. So router OSPF1. Then router ID, I'm going to hard code the router ID. Router ID, I'm going to hard code as 10.1.1.1. And also look at both, both the subnets are slash 24. So if I want to advertise, I had advertised network. So this is the way you advertise network 10.1.1.0. Then you must type wildcard mask. So wildcard mask is reverse of subnet mask. So basically what you do, you write all 255 minus subnet mask. It will give you the wildcard mask. Then keyword area, then area ID is zero. I'll do the same thing to the other one too, because they said between router one and router two, we have to use this method 10.12. 12.12 so router one is done very simple ospf so it's better than static routing because more scalable it is used by multi-vendor routing protocol so let's check what, what i type show run section ospf 
so pretty pretty simple route ospf one route id okay let's go to now router 2 router 2 i can only advertise two interfaces so let's go back to config t router ospf process id i'm going to as i said and normally when you do the lab you type the same process id but for the understanding we'll put two then i'm going to hard code the route id as 10.2.2.2 .2 .2. the network 10.2.2.0, 0.0.0.255 area 0, the network 10.12.12.0, 0, 0.0.0.255. .0 so network commands are used to establishing neighbor between R1 and R2. So as soon as I type this one, I should get a neighbor. Maybe I, yeah, I got the neighbor already, but now the very important thing is how I'm going to advertise Ethernet 00, 0 because it said I cannot use the network command. So to do that one, what I'm going, what I'm going to, I'm going to type interface Ethernet 00, IP OSPF. I have lots of uh, lots of command. I'm going to put IP OSPF. I can even shut down too. I'm going to type IP OSPF. You have to make sure whatever the process number you gave on the other side is two. Area area is going to be zero so this this is another way to advertise uh, OSPF either you can put on the put as a network command or this one so that means right now this router has two two way of defining OSPF okay let's uh, let's finish router 3 then we'll come and analyze let's go to router 3 router 3 everything has to be I don't know because I'm going to use everything so let's let's put this one router OSPF again process ID I'm going to put three and I'm going to put router ID 10.3.3.3 because loop back zero. I'm not going to put any network command here, rather, I'm going to go to interface Ethernet 00 and type IP OSPF 3. I have to make sure this matches with uh, whatever the OSPF process ID, then area zero, then interface loop back zero, IP OSPF 3 area zero i'm sorry i did a typo i'm going to remove it control a no then ip ospf 3 area zero guys you would you would like to see exactly what you typed okay so show run section ospf if you if you have want to troubleshoot you have troubleshoot under router ospf3 i have only route id but if i type show run pipe include into ospf 255 so i'm enabling under loopback zero i have an ip address i have put ip ospf3 so this three is process id area id same thing ethernet 00 there is no network command if i type if i go back to show run begin router ospf i have only route id defined let's go to router 2 and type the same thing show run begin router ospf so i have two network commands but if i type show run pipe include into 255 ospf only this interface I'm I'm putting to so there are R2 has three interfaces R1 everything is traditional method I'm typing show run begin router OSPF so remember R2 is a good example OSPF can be put as a network command or it can be enabled on the interface remember even after I enable on the interface if I put a wrong network command always interface maze command override the network commands so right now R2 in the network command I have two interfaces in the interface I have one so how do you know if I type show IP OSPF interface it's too much so I can type show IP interface show IP OSPF interface brief now it tells me I have I'm running on three interfaces if I go to R3 if I type show IP OSPF interfaces brief is going to again tell me I'm running OSPF on two interfaces. If I go to R1, it should be two show IP OSPF interface. 
interface brief okay let's analyze a little bit guys right now so let's analyze the routing table r1 should have two osp uh, three ospf route so like grip show ip route ospf that's right and see this time my administrative distance is 110 the metric is cost so remember metric is cost so if i go to r3 same thing show ip ospf show ip route ospf uh, you are going to see the three 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 routes okay if i go to route two right now if i type show ip route ospf you are going to see two ospf routes so on r2 let's check show ip ospf neighbor so again remember because they are ethernet interfaces it must be full state so i have two neighbors full state that's a good sign okay so remember ospf has five different ospf neighbor types when you go to higher studies you will study those different different types of ospf neighbor type for example ospf has network type so there is something called network type so important network types are broadcast multi-axis non-broadcast multi-axis and also there is something called ospf network type point to point and ospf network type multi-point the broadcast has to address and non-broadcast multi-axis has four neighbors one is called full dr so it's a valid neighbor relationship and also full bdr that is another valid neighbor relationship another one is called full drother full drother is also a, another valid neighbor relationship and also two-way drother so two-way is a valid neighbor relationship in terms of uh, ospf is concerned full drother and these two it has only one type is called full dash so that means you have five ospf neighbor relationship guys again remember whenever you have broadcast multi-axis and non-broadcast multi-axis there's a concept of a dr and there's a concept of a bdr and dr bdr election is based on priority so there's something called priority every interfaces have a ospf priority by default priority is one highest priority route become dr and next highest router priority become bdr and other routers have become dr other or drother so guys again these are theory theory part uh, in the class you will study the theory either in cc and new advanced topics so let's kind of go back to our configuration topic here so we saw so let's see a couple of commands on router 2 i'm going to make it big first one is neighbor then show ip ospf database so show ip ospf database is a topology table so topology table has different different entries so ospf by using lsa first is build the neighbor table after build after the neighbor it's advertised and send lsas lsa type 1 2 3 4 5 and 7 it build the topology table then from the topology table it build the routing table so from the topology table is run two types of algorithm so either it is called so algorithm wise what is this running it is called spf algorithm or some sometimes it calls dijkstra dij k str so spf stands for shortest path first dijkstra is the same algorithm is called dijkstra so one the algorithm is run on the topology table to get the routing table okay guys so right now another one so everything is good so but now we have to send the default route let's go to r2 and check the routing if i type there is no default route so on r1 first of all now i want to run before you do any changes always type show run section ospf to figure out what ospf you're running i'm running ospf1 so i'll go back to router ospf1 and default information originate i do not have to type always keyword because i already have a static default routes remember whenever you have a static default route just type default information originate this command will force a default route to come to r2 if i type up arrow i'm seeing oe2 default route again is beyond the scope of ccna the ospf route types there are there are five different there are a couple of different types of ospf let's quickly analyze that one 
but you don't have to worry about remembering. There is something called O route. There is something called O I A route. And there is O E2 route. O sometime you called as O E1 route. And finally, there is something called O N2 route and O something called O N1 route. Again, you don't have too much worry for the basic examination purpose. So one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six different types of OSPF. O stand for intra. Intra mean within area. OIA stand for inter area. Inter mean is coming from different area. These are called external. External mean is not, not non-OSPF areas. So it's, it's like a foreign routes, maybe a lift study. They are called NSSA area. So NSS stand for not so stubby area. As I said, don't worry too much right now on these ones. Okay guys, so I have a default route. So my NAT is there. I didn't change anything on the NAT. Let's quickly check the NAT configuration also. Show run pipe include NAT into and access. So all the NATs are there. So I have proper, so you have to make sure NAT has proper inside outside. And also you must make sure there's a proper static route, static default route. If you don't have proper static default route, nothing will work. From R3 right now, if everything is good, I should be able to ping everywhere. So let's try to ping. Let's ping the internet 8.8.8.8. Pinging. Ping 1.2.3.4. Pinging. If I go to router 1, I can check the NAT table also. Show IP NAT translations. So guys, remember to check out this one. So before I finish in this particular lab, I want to show you a couple of things. Let's look at this Ethernet 00. Show IP OSPF interface Ethernet 00. So very powerful command. So when I type show IP OSPF, I'm going to type on both R2 and R3. Show IP OSPF interface Ethernet 00. Don't put too much pressure, but just high level understand this is only needed in the high level one. It tells you what's the process ID. It tells you what's the route ID, just see, and also it's telling it's a broadcast ID. And it tells you what's the priority. It says state is DR. So what is important to understand here? So process ID is important, process ID too. Then route ID is important. The network type. The cost by default the cost is 10 because it is Ethernet. So 100. So cost is so OSPF metric is cost. It is in fact bandwidth. It, in fact, it is 100 divided by bandwidth. The bandwidth in megabit per second, Mbps. So that means my cost is 10. So 100 divided by 10. So the cost became 10. That's why how I got the cost. And here the very important thing is hello interval and dead interval. So by default, couple of things, the area has to match between two routers, area, area has to match and also hello and dead interval has to match. So I'm going to change hello and dead right now to show you the OSPF is going to go down. So if you're going to do troubleshooting, make sure area ID is same. So lots of people don't ignore this one. So process ID, I don't care. Okay. Don't care because it's local, local. No need to match between two routers. No match is required for process ID, but area ID has to match and hello and dead interval should match. So let's type the same thing on other router right now. Let's go to the, let's go to router three. Okay. Because I'm on the same spot. So it's coming. So now just look at the process ID. Process ID is three. The router ID is 10. There is a broadcast. So let's, let's do something. Let's go to our, let's, let's clear the screen and let's change the hello interval. So I want to give you an idea. You can change the hello interval. You can change the dead interval. You can do whatever you want. But my idea right now, I'll go to R2 config T interface ethernet zero slash zero. I'm going to type IP OSPF. I can type IP OSPF dead interval change it so I can change the value or I can go to 
IP OSPF hello interval and change it. So let's change the IP OSPF hello interval right now 10. Just for the fun, I'm going to change 12. So remember when I change hello interval, red interval also changes. Let's type show IP OSPF interface Ethernet 0 slash 0. Now it shows me my hello interval is 12. That is automatically changed to 48. But remember, so guys, before I go to this one, show IP OSPF neighbor. Remember this going down, dead time are now going down because it's not matching. 6, 5, very soon my OSPF is going to go down. OSPF is gone. So right now, OSPF is down because my hello and dead interval do not match. So you have to look at the output. You have to type show IP OSPF interface Ethernet 00. You have to make sure on the other router also you type the same thing. Show IP OSPF interface Ethernet 00. So you see everything is same here. It's like mainly you have to look at the area ID. You have to make sure so area ID 0. Here also area ID 0. So area ID 0. But problem here is broadcast. This one also broadcast. So they are same the network type very important thing comes and also you have to make sure router id is unique so if i on router 3333 router 2 is 222 so by mistake if i type router 3 also 10.2.2.2 so let's do that one too just so I, I want to show you guys that one too so we are trying to see it's helping on the you have to see this troubleshooting exam too we are trying to see how ospf to break so let's try to fix this one as a fix i'm going to change back to 10 so config t interface ethernet 0 slash 0 ip ospf ip ospf hello interval i'll change back to 10 show ip ospf neighbor it should come at any time let's wait until it come yeah the ospf came up right away if i type show ip ospf neighbor i should see two neighbors if i type show ip route ospf I should see route coming from everywhere so so it's very quick guys okay if i if i type show ip ospf interface ethernet 0 slash 0 you should know it is back to 10 and 40. again remember for ospf neighbor relationship again i'm just telling a little bit more right now you don't have to too much worry again okay so ospf to become neighbor ospf to become neighbor couple of important things Number one, area ID has to match. Number two, hello and dead interval has to match. Number three, you have to have proper interfaces. Proper interface with IP address. You have to make sure IP address is springable. They are part of the proper, proper interface. Number four, no duplicate route ID no duplicate RID so I'm going to change that one finally it must be compatible network type so compatible network type that means so you can have you can have BMA and NBMA or you can have point to point and multi point but in both cases, you have to make sure the hello and dead interval is same because they are not the same. For broadcast 10 and 40, non-broadcast 30 and 120, point to point 10 and 40 and multipoint 30 and 120. So guys, again, this for the knowledge high level. Let's go back to our... So finally, I'm going to change the router ID just to show you guys. Okay, let's go to router 3 and see if the neighbor is up. Show IP OSPF neighbor. Okay, so let's change the router ID here also. So before I do that one, do show run section OSPF. So I'm running OSPF3. So let's go to router OSPF3. And let's change the router ID to 10.2.2.2. So I'm typing same as router2. And to activate this one, I'm going to type clear IP OSPF process. So let's see the fun. Oh, OSPF neighbor went away right away. Okay, sometimes you will not see the message because if I disable logging, now it says duplicate route ID because logging is enabled by default. So show IP OSPF neighbor 
neighbor is not there because there's a duplicate route ID. So you have to verify if they say OSPF neighbor is not coming up, you have to check all these ones. And you have to know how to advertise OSPF in two different methods. Guys, OSPF is very important where if you go to job or anything in the future because OSPF is one of the true link state routing protocols. So there are two link state routing protocol. One is OSPF, other one is ISIS. Let's fix this one, guys. So I'll go back to router OSPF 3 because router 3. So remember to don't type 1. You have to be very careful. You just go and check the existing configuration. I'm going to type route ID is 10.3.3.3. As I said, I always type clear IP OSPF process. So now neighbor is done. So one more time, show IP OSPF neighbor, show IP OSPF database, show IP route OSPF, then powerful command is show IP OSPF interface. So show IP OSPF interface give, will give you lots of wealth of information. So guys, we have done this lab, very good lab. My ask is if you can do the lab even with the couple of routers, even two routers, but try to understand. So I'm going to go through all R1, R2, R3 commands, what I what we typed, then we will finish this uh, video. Okay, R1. Show IP OSPF interface brief. Show run begin router OSPF. I have two network command, then I have two, so I have two network command, then I have two, two OSPF interface, so I know I'm doing everything good. I'm doing a normal method. Let's go to R2, show IP OSPF interface brief. There are three, three OSPF interfaces, but if I type show run begin router OSPF, there are only two network commands, so as I know like show run interface ethernet Zero, 0 So I'm enabling OSPF on this interface on an interface interface and enabling Router 3 show IP I think router 3 we saw before So router 3 we are using new method of configuring show show IP OSPF Interface brief two interfaces show run begin router OSPF there are no network command at all. So if I want to see show run interface loop back, I can type show run, type include int 255 OSPF. So it tells me on loop back zero, also I'm enabling OSPF, right? On enabling on the interface, Ethernet 00, also I'm enabling on the interface. Guys, I can't stress how much important is this lab. So try to mimic this lab and do the lab on a GNS. And good luck in your studies and we'll hope to see you soon, soon in different video.